Some good water. Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. In today's video I do not have a tutorial. So pretty much this video is going to be an informative video to people who don't have hair like me. What I mean by that is people who don't have afro hair. I grew up in areas that were predominantly Caucasian. Afro hair understanding and perception of it was very different back then. Because I grew up in those areas, I had a lot of questions, a lot of people were asking it out of curiosity because they do genuinely want to know, but sometimes don't know how to ask it, which may come out as ignorant. That is what I want to pretty much shed light to. I'm pretty much going to outline a few questions we as Afro, Afro hair bearing people get and I also want to try and discuss alternatives on how they can approach certain questions so I just want to get a few things straight don't get me wrong this is not only for just Caucasian Indian Chinese people who don't have Afro hair this is also targeted to some of our African brothers who also don't know how we treat our hair and what why we do certain things that we do I have met African men who actually don't know how we deal with our hair which is a bit scary knowing that their mothers and their sisters you know probably have African hair but let me not generalize so pretty much this is broad information for everybody so we can all be happy first question that I normally get is can I touch your hair now me personally if I know you, there's an 80% chance I will let you touch my hair Bearing in mind, I check where in which environment we're in, if your hands are clean, because I don't want dirty fingers touching my hair, no. If you're a complete stranger, I won't. I'll politely decline it, because at the end of the day, it makes it seem like we are animals that you can just pet and touch your hair. I understand you want to feel the texture. I'm curious, I get that, but for us, it's like, whoa. Right. An alternative is you can comment on the hair texture by saying it looks soft or whatever the case is Then as the conversation is going maybe just maybe which is like a 10% chance She will say or the person will say do you want to touch my hair? It's more likely never than anything else, but let's avoid that question second thing is <clears throat> it's not a question, but People really still confuse dreads with braids. There is a complete dif differentiation between dreads and braids. Braids, literally, you can see there is a braid. It's braided. Three hair strands or how many hair strands? Literally, there's a lot of Caucasian girls that braid their hair. They do those French plaits or whatever it may be. Those are braids. Dreads are when people twist their hair so that it locks. You can see it's not a braid, it's literally twisted hair. So they use dread wax, so it helps to literally lock the hair, literally twist the hair so that it's twisted. <laughs> I don't even know how else to explain it, but there's a complete differentiation between dreads and braids. If I have braids on my head and you come and tell me dreads, bye. Don't even talk to me because that's, that's ignorance. <laughs> a question I get often when I have braids, how do you wash it? It's pretty simple. You put shampoo on my scalp, I lather it with the pads of my fingers, and I rinse it with water. There's literally no science to it. It's, I just have braids on my head. It doesn't make any difference. I'm not saying that my hair gets as clean um, effectively with braids on, but I can still wash my hair. <laughs> Why is your hair greasy? Well, the thing about afro hair is that it needs to be moisturized. A lot of Caucasian, Chinese, Indian, people who have very straight hair, type 1 hair, don't need any hair food. A lot of Caucasian people hate greasy hair, which is okay. So we need to keep our hair moisturized so that it can grow, so that it can be nourished, so that it can be fed. You know our hair is greasy if you're putting your fingers in it, number one. And number two, instead of saying, why is your hair so greasy, say, what kind of products do you use in your hair? Do you put products often? Make it a little bit less ignorant. You got me? Understand? The other question I get is how long is your hair? 
with a lot of naturals speaking of personal experience right now I am trying to make sure that my hair is healthy before I you know measuring my length but if you're going to ask that our hair growth rate is not the same as a typical Caucasian Indian Chinese our hair rate grows very differently and afro hair grows in a much slower rate than other people's hair because of curl pattern and because of the breakage we experience so easily because of the way our hair is i don't get offended but i've seen people that are like why is this relevant why do you want to know so how do you put on your braids okay this i can understand because a lot of people get confused or don't really understand how my hair can be the short and then tomorrow it's up to my bum so the best i can say is maybe google a video on how you apply braids with extension but if you're going to ask how you actually braid a hair i mean please let's let's not do that in 2019 let's just get on the same page how do you take it off i unbraid it i can use a I'm pretty sure in 2019 we'll know how to unbraid braids. Just... Can't you just put it straight? No. Sweetheart, it's not that easy. In primary school, me and my sisters, my younger sisters, we went to the same primary school and the most common question out of the girls is they would ask us why can we not just make it straight? And you know, also as a child and growing up, you don't really understand why your hair is different to others and you also want to try and make your hair the same because that is what everybody is. That's how everybody's hair is. It's all straight and long and beautiful. So it was really hard when to explain to them how our hair is and how we can't just automatically make it straight. I mean, obviously we can blow dry it and straighten it and everything, but the stress that you're putting into your hair and the heat damage that you are exposing your hair to is tremendous by doing that and I feel like um, a lot of young girls tend to damage their hair a lot to try and fit in but to have straight hair all the time. I remember I was in grade 7 and we had the barnyard. It was a barnyard farewell whatever, whatever. In the group that I was in obviously I only had Caucasian girls in my group. I tried to fit in at home before we all met together to get ready and everything. I straightened my hair before I went so that when we get there, all we needed to do was put on the clothes, you know, look all like similar, whatever the theme is. And all I needed to do was just comb my hair the way everybody else was combing their hair so that I could fit in. I was the only black girl. What upset me that day was actually um, we all met at a friend's house and her mom was doing everybody's makeup. And everybody looked pretty, everybody had this beautiful mascara, eyeshadow, base. And when she got to me, she looked at me and she's like, like, oh, um, <laughs> I kind of don't have anything for you. You know, I'm not blaming her or anything, but it was the challenges that I faced growing up in a very, very Caucasian society. Going back to the question, can you just make it straight? No, I can make it straight, but I won't make it straight because that is not the damage I want to cause to my hair and it's not that easy. I can't just wake up and quickly blow dry, quickly straighten because it, it just doesn't work like that. Our hair does not work like that. Put the question, can you not make it straight or can you not just leave it down? If I take off this pony, my hair is just not gonna... This crown defies gravity. It is beautiful in its own way. It's magical. So, when I take off my pony, it is not going to just hit my shoulders and blow in the wind not a chance i feel like people need to stop asking these questions just need to understand the basics and you know as much as i also want to educate a lot of people a lot of people must be willing to want to learn and want to understand with the friends that i do have and the people that i know who don't have afro hair who still do ask questions or still say things i always try to you know see the curiosity side of them asking or their comments and when I do find it inappropriate I I do correct them and I do make sure that they understand how I grew up was very different to how they grew up and it is very important especially to our young girls and 
young Afro African girls who are beautiful in their own light to understand that their hair is different, our skin color may be different, but we're all the same people. But at the same time, to stay rooted to their beauty and stop conforming to westernized societal beauty standards that, you know, continuously help demoralize them. In today's day, I'm actually very grateful that there are a lot of dark skinned, beautiful Afro girls who are coming out in the light and seeing the magazines and we're seeing them in TV. With all that is happening now, I still speak to some of my friends who have younger siblings and what they tell me, how they feel about their skin color and their hair is actually so sad. So it's very important for us to spread the message to ensure that we don't just educate the people who are not like us, but who are us. That we are beautiful, guys. There's, there's room for all types of beauty in the world. There's room for beauty like ours. It's just important that we shed light to the importance of understanding how our hair works and for everybody else. So those are just the little things that I wanted to tap into. Thank you for watching and may we spread the education to everybody who needs to know this. And don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you guys in the next one.